Hello, and welcome back to the Movies Archives. This is your host, Movies Rex, and we are playing Kerbal Space Program. Let's start our game. All right, so last time we were actually pretty successful. Whoops, not here. Uh, in getting our science research, if you check here, East Farside Highlands, Farside East Crater, we have at least one report from all of these, uh, just in space above the East Crater, unfortunately. Um, we have a lot more because Midlands, Lowlands, and Slopes definitely not uh, everything we can get from uh, uh, Minmus. However, we do have a few more uh, missions oh, available man. to us. Uh, that we have to get. Uh, plant flag on the moon, easy enough done. We also have a deadline of nine years to get that done. Uh, science from space around Kerbin, that should be easy enough done once we actually take off uh, by Goliath National Products. Uh, Altronic has something in 12 years and that's Minmus Science. And here's Kerbodyne wanting uh, an engine tested. Just need to make sure there's nothing that's really going to hurt us too bad if we leave um, Kerbin. Like testing the Rockomax Skipper Liquid Engine orbiting Kerbin. Uh, we can definitely get that Skipper engine tested. Why don't we do that right now? All right, we have a pretty straightforward build. This should, in theory, uh, get us to hold on, orbit uh, so we can activate this this uh, uh, skipper engine it's going to cost us uh, 40,000 credits or funds whatever and we're just going to launch that right now all right throttle up and go not too terribly stable not the best uh, ship design but it should be enough Whoa, hello, overheating. That's gonna blow up. Yeah, I didn't want that to happen. Let's revert flight to vehicle assembly. Um, let's move those offside. Oops. There. Uh, two of them. Balance issues. And hopefully, I'll move them down. Yeah, like that. And hopefully this time, get a better launch instead of our engines blowing up. And go. You guys probably can't see anything, but I actually expect this to be a pretty straightforward, uh, pretty straightforward launch. Um, which over to orbit already. Just to get this guy into orbit and test our skipper engine while in orbit. Apparently we're overheating. Why are we overheating? Let's just check how far up we are. Oh, yeah, that's more than enough. Thank you very much. We'll wait a bit. Uh, we overdid it a little, uh, getting up to our apoapsis. And keep an eye on electric charge. But we should be okay. Uh, let's tip over a little. We have quite a bit of fuel. A lot of fuel, actually. Probably didn't need to spend as much as we did on this ship. Okay, bring our engines back online. We are a minute out, but I don't think it matters at this point. We are so close to our apoapsis that we should be able to establish a good orbit fairly quickly. Cut that. Let's get a little bit closer. And bring that online. There's our orbit. Let's see. Which one are we doing? Oh, hello. No. Uh, science data, science data, test engine cluster. Oh, I could have done that as well. Or not, I'm not sure. Ionic engine. The Ionic engine is an interesting thing because it has a special fuel. 
Here it is. A skipper engine in orbit. Oh, my altitude's too high. Damn it, I wasn't paying enough attention. Alright. Well, let's deorbit that. And I guess... How far is our periapsis? 53. So we should be in orbit. Don't know why it's not saying we're in orbit. Let's wait till our... Oh, because we're not in orbit. All right, activate the engine. Because we need that to be at least an orbit. So let's just wait to come around. One way to uh, kind of... Ooh, hello. Huh, I didn't know you could do that. Can I get back to my ship? Thank you. Yes. So one way to kind of trick the system into thinking you're running a test is to add another stage and restage so that your engine starts up again. Uh, we do need to get this down into 97,000 meters, so we'll just wait until we're on, our, on the other side of our orbit to do so. This is science for money. There we go. And all we have to do is activate our engine. Like so, and we get a success. Let's check that. So we get uh, 133,000, much more than the 40,000 we spent. Uh, 34 science and 521 prestige, really. Hmm. Well, back to the space center. So we've got a good chunk of science to spend. Um, nuclear engines definitely want to be part of our arsenal. I mean, our space program. Uh, we don't quite have enough to get very heavy rocketry, which is 550. Uh, we get, did get some science from that mission, so that's good. Um, we do, we can pick up something from this stage here. Um, let's pick up something with science in it. Um, this is a barometer, so if anything has an atmosphere, it'll work. This has a seismic accelerometer, so if we can get to the ground, this will work. Uh, this has gravioli detector, but that's 550 science. And it's void if we do detect positive gravioli particles. Um, let's grab this one. Um, we're going to try landing on Minmus. What's this? Um, generators always active and always generates an electric charge. This is a new something I haven't seen before. This is a thermoelectric generator through the natural decay of plutonium 238. This elegant, elegantly simple power generation can provide consistent, stable power for decades. Also waterproof and dishwasher safe. So this pretty much eliminates the need for... Um, it's expensive, I think, but it does eliminate the need for solar panels. So solar panels are here. Um, so the minimum size solar panel, four to five per minute, um, and costs, it doesn't tell me how much it costs here. Well, whatever. But it should come into your decisions when building stuff, how much this stuff costs and how much it weighs. What I think, though, is we want to focus more on getting ourselves down to planet surfaces. And so we are going to get large control. Uh, that'll give us a lander can. Uh, give us a little bit better landers, I guess, maybe. Uh, we'll find out. Oh, no, I've been deluding myself. What did I just get? Oh, I got this. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Ah, so we'll go with that. Uh, so we've got another mission here to test the Kerbodyne KR2L advanced engine in a suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. And we'll do that just because it gives us the access to that engine. Mm. We won't test it, we'll just use it. Uh, and I think that's this. So we take a look. Huge. These two engines are quite large. Um, so I think this one provides, yeah, maximum thrust 2,500. 
this Max Rest 2000, this Max Rest 3200. So these are our best thrusts, heavy lift vehicle type things. So we could actually, <laughs> how much thrust does this go? Th 650. So if we wanted to, I'm not saying we do, like these are the largest fuel pods that we have. But if we wanted to, we could set up something like this uh, with structural, structural. This is my farthest out separators. Come on, thank you. Like that. And add in a couple more. Come on. Like so. Oh, that doesn't even that intersects. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because that should get us burning up in the atmosphere fairly quickly. Um. Hmm. All right. Well, we have the Minmus Biome Lander out on the launch pad. Uh, these three engines are going to fire off. We'll see how quickly they burn through the fuel before we ditch them. Um, then this engine, why are these on the same stage? That engine goes. Um, then we decouple, and then these engines start up. Uh, then we decouple, making sure I don't completely destroy the ship um, before uh, getting to Minmus. All right, so let's give this a try. Podberry is in the cabin, and full throttle. Not bad. Didn't rip the ship apart. It's not going as fast as I would have expected, but there is a lot of fuel on these engines. Um, we'll see how far this gets. This may not even get them... Whoa, hello. Uh, this may not even get them in, into orbit. It might. It should, I'd expect, for with all the thrust these engines are purported to be able to put out. Um, especially with three of them. But damn expensive. Um, if this doesn't get us to orbit, uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, if it doesn't get us to Minmus, we'll also have to see what we can do. Not bad. We still have fuel uh, as we approach 10,000 kilometers, as we approach 15,000 kilometers up. Let's tip over and get ourselves into a nice orbit. Um, that's going way fast. Faster than I thought it would. Oh, and now that's flattening up too fast. Aim up a little bit, all right? Because that's just not enough. Nine. We still are cutting through. Oh, there we go. That's it for those engines. So it got us up to 30,000. We'll get us up to about 40,000. But we have to ditch these suckers. Bye bye. And. Ignite. Hello. Oh, what the heck? Lost control there for a second. We need to get ourselves up and into orbit. All right, we have reached space. And I'm even in orbit. Uh, an unstable orbit, but it's an orbit nonetheless. Where is Minmus? Set as our target. Might as well adjust our inclinations as we can while we're out here and get us into a proper orbit as well. Sending node is 5.9. Definitely have to drop that a fair bit. Flip this over. RCS. This is why we have RCS, is so we can move our ship. I realize that I don't have an interplanetary stage. And that's a problem. That's a bad design. Um, I need to adjust stuff if we do plan on getting... <laughs> if we do plan on getting to Minis, or even if it is within... I guess it is kind of interplanetary. 
intersystem? Not sure. Um, but we do have a lot of fuel in our fuel tanks. Probably more than we need to carry. There we go. Apple apps just flipped around. Sending notes 5.9. We want to move it. Which way's down? Down? Down. I think this is up. Turn SAS on so it doesn't just continue to fight me. Yeah, this is up. All right. Let us rotate over before speeding up time, which will start a ro stop our rotation. 180. Get close to the ascending node and just bring this down a little before we even attempt uh, our orbit. And watch as that it changes. Don't want to go too much. Change it too much, too fast. Otherwise, it will get away from you. Like that. That's pretty close. I think we're now on the descending node side. To fix that, we'd have to go up. The complete opposite direction. Alright, zeroed out these nodes. That's a good place to hit at 5. Now... We are going to have a little bit of a problem, and that's uh, whether we have enough fuel to maneuver to get ourselves to Minmus. First, we might as well find out oof, how far we need to go and what our best chances getting to Minmus are. So let's drag this around a bit like that. That looks interesting and exciting. Over there. Is that behind us? Yeah. So that's in one orbit. We can do that. Uh, 23 second burn. Crazy. Uh, can we do better? There we go. That should get us close enough. Still a 23 second burn. And I think we have enough fuel to do that. Uh, let's find our target and then uh, wait a while. Okay, it's 23 second burn, so we kind of want to burn... 11 seconds one side, 12 seconds the other side, and see what that does to our orbit. Get closer. Remember, can't go really fast past this, or you might miss everything. And just burn, baby, burn. See our fuel situation. Not bad. Keep on target. SAS on. Thank you very much. Keep us on spot. It's starting to move away from us. Cut it. Let's see what we got. Not nearly enough. Burn a little bit more. All right. What do we need to do? More? There we go. Minmus encounter in four days, five hours, and 43 minutes. I can't really tell from here what that really looks like. So we're just going to accelerate on. Okay, entering Minmus's sphere of influence. And that's not bad. All right, what do we need to do to stop? Swinging like that. Give us a... Nice periapsis. Around 100. Alright. So keep in mind, we are carrying these big heavy engines around with us. Uh, this would be a much better if we had a smaller ship, more nimble. Uh, it would be a little bit more nimble. And this just actually takes forever to get things around. So keep that in mind when you're building your ships. The larger the ship, if you don't have compensating thrusters, the slower it is to turn over. That was my mistake. Bring us over here. We've got an hour or so. A few minutes. And we missed it, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. 
It's only a six second burn. Shouldn't run out of fuel. And whoa. Area opposite of 120. 95. Let's get down there. And continue. Close that. Uh, continue our explosion. Am I going polar? It's kind of polar. Hmm. Didn't want that. So rotation rate. Hmm. Troubling. I came in polar, so that was kind of a wonky approach on my part. Uh, I want to aim for the flats because I don't think, like, if we uh, go back to the space center. And just check our science archives. I don't think I have any of the flats. Yeah, midlands, lowlands, and slopes. So our aim... I have it up on another screen. Our aim is to land in greater flats, great flats, or just the flats, lesser flats. Um, we can do... If we can find a highland, we, should la we could land on a highland. Uh, but the poles also count as well. Let's do that. Definitely um, can get to the poles. We definitely should be able to get to the poles. May as well make this a polar lander since we're pretty much in that orbit anyway. All right, and that's coming up in a minute. And because we left, I don't know what the burn time is. Probably isn't a minute. It's only 70, 75.9 meters per second, but I have to find that target position. There it is. Like I said, smaller ships are more nimble. And I'm probably just burning through my RCS uh, trying to do this. So we won't have as much as we want for landing. All right, almost there. Let's just give us a nudge. It's a one second burn. Get back there. Get back. Get back. Four seconds. You can hear my cat rattling in the background there. I got him a bell. Nice little red collar too. And... Burn. Cut. And go. Yep, that gets us a polar landing. Alright, so next episode, we'll come back. Come back to Podbury and try to get a couple polar... Orbit's done, and a polar landing. Have a good day, and a wonderful night. Bye-bye.